Hey friends, it's Marie at Living Felt. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We have a fun little needle felting project. We are gonna needle felt this cute little ice skater ornament. She will glisten on your tree and her skates will catch all the lights. It's really a fun beginner friendly project. So we hope that you will hit the subscribe button to get notified every time we upload a new video and keep watching so you can make one with us. This is what we're needle felting today. Let me spin her around. And I shared her just a quick sneak peek last night on Facebook. And this little girl is based on a, um, she's, let me get a little bit closer. She is based on a vintage ornament that I have treasured for a long time, except mine didn't have a skirt. And of course there was no wool and her skates were just wood. So she's kind of fashioned after a little peg doll ornament. And we actually do have a supply pack for this class so um, you can get a little supply pack to make her too and it's even going to include two different colors of fabric so that you can uh, make a similar one so uh, we're just going to jump right in here and get started Shona says that she's beautiful <laughs> Heather says oh so cute <laughs> thank you so it's a really fun project this is absolutely beginner friendly and um, I'm just going to show her to you just before we start. Oops, I had to go. Sorry, I'm on the wrong camera. Hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm new. <laughs> uh, so this is our little ornament. She does have a very simple armature in her. Um, and I've done three different armatures to kind of come up with one that I thought was really easy to work with um, and easy to do. We need to change something. Would you like me to keep uh, no, okay, so anyway, it's super fun, and we're just going to jump right in so that we can get started. So I'm going to go to a top-down view real fast and show you, for those of you who don't know us, um, this is the wool that we're working with today, is Living Felt MC1 Batting, and this is what comes in the kit. And we've chosen to use vintage red and cotton white. We've chosen to use vintage red and cotton white uh, for this little kit. And of course, if you don't get uh, the kit and you use your own supplies, well then um, you can use any colors you want. But to be consistent, these are the two colors we used. And then um, we're gonna be using pale peach on the face and uh, some black and some brown as well. So in your kit, you're gonna get some regular chenille stems and you're also gonna get a super glisteny chenille stem for uh, her ice skates. Uh, Judy says, this is so darling. I will be trying this. <laughs> oh, fun, fun, fun. I hope you do, and I, I really hope to see yours uh, if you make yours. So I'm going to prop our little girl here. She can supervise us while we're working. So we're going to give you the chenille stems in your kit. We're going to give you the fabric. Um, two different types of fabric and they'll be slightly varied, but I think every kit gets this one for her little uh, cinch sack that she's carrying and uh, a jingle bell. Um, and so you just need to supply some regular sewing thread. Uh, I'm going to suggest that anyway and some embroidery floss. The other things you're going to want to have are wire cutters, some simple scissors, um, I'm using some pinking shears, if you don't know what those are. They cut like little triangles into your fabric. And a couple of measuring devices, a ruler, maybe I have a ruler here, a little quilter's ruler, just makes it easy to have something small sometimes. And then uh, a three inch circle of some kind. I'm using what I always use, some kind of bowl or vessel from my, from my house. <laughs> so let's start with our armature. And what's gonna happen is Anne's just going to share with me any questions as they come up. And I'm gonna go as fast as I can so we can show you as much as possible in today's, in today's section. Uh, Sherry says, what a, what a wonderful project. I can't wait to make these as gifts for my friends and family. Oh, but, you know, these really would make super fun gifts. And, you know, ornaments are something that can be treasured for such a long time. Somebody, I'm looking for our video. I can't find us. Um, somebody told me that an ornament I gave them last year it was the mouse ornament, which I had even forgotten that I gave it to her. Um, she displayed it after Christmas over her bed. <laughs> Isn't Aww. that cute? I know, that was charity. Okay, so I'm gonna cut all three of these to eight inches. We're gonna cut all three of these to eight inches and save 
your four inchers off to the side. You want to save those off. So the first thing we're going to do is The first thing we're going to do is twist the body together, and this is what we're going to make, this little figure right here. What I'm going to show you is I want the arms to be, I'm going to try and zoom in just a little bit, let me see if I go a little bit closer. What we're going to do is make the arms and legs a certain length, and so we're going to make the arms about two and a half inches long, the body is going to be about an inch and a half. And then the leg portion is going to be about two, uh, it could be about two and a half inches long as well. You could go a little bit over if you want. So then what I like to do is start with where the arms are. If I know I want the arm to be two and a half inches, the first thing I'm going to do is twist my little person together, leaving two inches or two and a half inches at the end. So I'm going to start my twist right there at the two and a half inch mark and just twist down. And this is just a simple way to twist. And we only want that body to be an inch and a half. Much longer, and uh, I tend to do these like really overly long torsos. So stop the body at an inch and a half, and then you have the legs out. Um, okay. Then what we're going to do is take one of our pieces, one of our extra pieces that we had. I think I, I was supposed to cut those to seven, but now I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, we're going to take one of those little pieces that we had, and we're actually going to reinforce the arms. So that it doesn't have to go all the way to the end. You can just twist it around. You just want the arms to have a little more girth on them. I do. I think I had my other ones longer. It doesn't really matter. And then this one, we're going to do the same thing. Just You could just put it right in the middle and twist it down the leg a little bit. Well, Diana says you could even tuck a candy cane in under her arm for a gift treat. Oh, too. that is such a cute idea. Okay, so now here's, here's my little body. And I want the feet, I need enough room in the feet to bend the feet back around. So the hands can just curl in at the end, that's fine. I'm gonna just tuck our little hands in. You want all pokey, all pokey ends to go back in. But the leg, what you wanna do is go to that inch and a half mark, about, it's about an inch and a half, um, and then put, I put my finger there and then I twist this back to be the foot. So that's kind of the foot. And I'm gonna pinch it together because the foot's gonna kind of go like that. Now mine seems a little long. I think I cut mine, I think before I actually had mine at seven inches. So bear with me, I'm gonna take off a little snip. I'm gonna take off a half inch on each of these feet because I don't want my little girl to have these huge feet. <laughs> yeah, I think originally I cut mine to about seven. All right, so all you're gonna do is go to that inch and a half mark Fold that rest back in, that's about an inch folded in on itself, and now we have a little foot. So, again, inch and a half mark, fold it in to meet that point where your thumb is, and then put that up. So now we have kind of a reinforced little body, and this is going to be a head loop. So if you felt it with me before, we've made head loops, and that's what we're going to do today too. I'm just going to give that a couple of little twists and leave it open. You only need about a pinky, uh, about a pinky. Are we too close or are we doing okay? We're doing okay. All right. Okay, so y'all just tell, uh, y'all just let us know if you need to see anything better. Um, and we're going to keep on going here. Now, the first thing I want to do is wrap my hands and my feet. I have done it the other way, and I really find that wrapping the red on the hands and the feet seems like the best place to start. So this is my little basket of wool. Let me go out a little bit. Okay. And I've got my head loop, my skater. 
I'm gonna wrap the hands and the feet. Now the key to wrapping little parts is getting little thin amounts of wool. So I like to usually fold my wool in half. For those of you who aren't, who aren't familiar with our MC1 batting, you're gonna see that we use it in a lot of videos. And the best way to learn about it is just to work with it and then see why we you know, recommend it so often. But you're gonna see right now, I was able to divide this into like two little tiny pieces and the length doesn't matter. What's most important is that we have some really narrow little strips. Could you use armature other than chenille stems? You can, and I didn't bring one, but I used our hard like metal wire, but this just grabs on there so much better, and then it's still bendy. It's still nice to work with. Okay, so I'm just going to be uh, wrapping this the wool for my feet, and just find whatever way is comfortable for you. I tend to twist with my right hand, and the key is that you want this to be nice and narrow. So we're gonna do together just like one hand and one foot. I see that Michelle says MC1 needle felt so easily. Now notice that all I did, let me see if I can get in a little bit closer here, all I did was just sort of grab this wool onto the chenille stem and I am just twisting it. Twist a few times and get some bulk on there and hey, you're, some of you are going to remember this, let the wool stick up over the toe. Let it stick up off over there a little bit. Now I probably twisted four times and now I'm going to tuck that little wool under there and wrap again. The tighter you, oh, let me get it under there, the tighter you wrap, the less you're gonna have to poke. Now, I've only wrapped the foot, and now I'm just gonna wrap up the ankle a little bit. Wrap up the ankle a few times, don't leave it too thin. We want a little bulk there so we can create a little shelf for our skate, but you also don't wanna go too high. So at first, it just looks like draft mode, which it is and you can make your skate as thick or as thin as you want. And the nice thing about the batting is it kind of grabs onto itself and also you can just pull it off. You don't have to deal with super long strands of fiber. Uh, Devi says, does it matter what color the pipe cleaner is? No, Devi, it doesn't. Um, you can use, like our kits are gonna have some white, some light gray, some sort of tan, because we're gonna cover it 100% with wool. So notice I haven't poked a thing and my wool is staying in place. This is part of the magic of the MC1 batting. You can dry felt it with your hands a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is just use a 42 triangle to needle felt it in place. But you don't have to poke into the foam. You can just, I'm going to be quiet so you can hear the needle. If you can. I'm not poking into the foam, and if I do, I'm barely tacking off the foam surface. The mistake is to needle felt all the way through and poke through to the other side so it gets fuzzy. I'm using a 42 triangle, which is very, very fine. It's a little bit slower to work, but what's gonna happen is you're gonna be able to needle felt these little shallow layers of wool <clears throat> without poking all the way through and without leaving big needle marks. And how, how deep are you going? Oh, I'm only going to like the middle of the pile. So like if I'm needle felting in, I'm only going like in, I'm not even going all the way through. So vary your angle so that you don't have to go all the way through. There's just no need to. So I'm gonna poke this and needle felt it as much as I need to. Um, and I know it's uh, it might be a little hard to see, but this is a little piece. So I just want to encourage you to get really up close and personal to your work, and take your time to make your uh, you know your little boots and your little mittens look really really good. Now for my mittens, I didn't do anything different. Um, all I did was wrap around. Um, and I didn't give her any thumbs or any fingers. So let me just show you how to end the boots and the mittens, and that is, I'm gonna go straight down into this top here. Uh, I'll hold it a little bit at an angle, but what I wanna do is create a shelf. So just neat poke straight down all the way around and create a little shelf so that it looks like the boot actually has some dimension. And that's totally, you know, pre stylistic preference. Um, Oh, Connie says, I love the crunch in that wool. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you can't, I know you can't see much, but all I'm doing is needle felting straight down into the top of the boot to give it this little bit of a, of a shelf. So go all the way around and do both boots and finish both of your boots completely um, and your mittens 
so that you don't have any loose fibers. You should be able to pluck at it and no fibers come off. So spend your time getting those really in place and then as we wrap the body, those fibers will really stay in place. So you're gonna do the same on each boot and the same for each hand and I'm going to just do uh, the body real fast to show you how to wrap up from here. Because we have a lot to do. This project has a lot of little pieces. They're all easy, but there's a lot of them. Okay. Someone says, is this going to be a tutorial? Linda, here we're in it. <laughs> I don't know. It already is. Here we are. <laughs> uh, Jennifer says she's been poking too deep. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's, it's good to recognize. Okay, so check it out. I'm going to just go out a little bit. This is my white fiber. This is just our cotton white. Um, it is a natural unbleached white. I like it for this project. And again, I'm going to split that thickness because if you want to control lumps and bumps, then you've got to get your wool nice and thin. You don't want it to have twists. You don't want it to have lumps and bumps. And the thinner this is, the easier it is to draft out. So what we're going to do again is draft it out really thinly. Just move those legs out of the way. We're going to start wrapping right above the boot. You don't even have to needle felt it down, but wrap tight, 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 tight. Wrap enough on there that you don't see uh, your armature shape. You should put enough on there that you don't see your armature shape. Now you can do this with the single armature. I, I mean, you don't have to double wrap it. I just found that she had less noodle uh, appendages if I gave her a double wrap. I really liked it with the metal wire, but I found it was much slower and more ah. fussy. So I kind of left, experimented with this a little bit and I like to wrap one leg all the way uh, and then you can come up on the body and then I'm gonna actually wrap the other leg up onto the body too. So you can terminate it wherever you want, but it is easier to go from here to here than to go back down because you never know where you're gonna run out. I mean, with MC1, honestly, it doesn't really matter. But before you go, I don't want you to make this part of the body too thick. We're just going to get the leg started, and then we're going to put the head on. Okay? So we're going to stop here, and you're going to do leg two the same way. Remember to dry felt along your way, and uh, meaning you're going to just use your hands like this. And before you let go of anything, make sure to needle felt. Now this is a 42 triangle. I'm holding now a green one. The under parts, I don't care if there's needle marks. It's going to go a little faster than a 42. You could also use a 38 star or a 38 triangle or a 38 spiral, whatever you like. But on the torso, it doesn't matter because that part's not gonna show yet. That'll go a little faster. But on the leg, you wanna take your time and needle felt at these really shallow angles. Poke, 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 poke. I want to say that I think a reason to spend a lot of time needle felting this little underbody is because Christmas ornaments get packed away every year. They also get handled when people come to visit, don't oh, they? Yeah. People pick them up and touch them. And if you, whether this is for you, even if it is for you, don't we often end up gifting ornaments as you know, we get older, they get handed down to somebody and even little things like this become an heirloom. Like the one I have is just a simple little doll and I love her to pieces. And um, she has to be 20, I don't know, 60, over 60 years old, you know, she's, oh, wow. and she's in perfect condition. So like I said, she's not wool, but especially since it is, take your time and needle felt all these parts down really well and get those legs smooth. So don't rush. Okay. So you're going to do the other leg the same way, but let's make a head. We want to get the head on before we build up this torso. And what I like to do is just leave a little opening in my loop there. Come in a little closer. And we're gonna draft this out again. Some of you who've done the doll tutorial with me are already familiar with this kind of way. I'm going to poke the wool through that loop and then we're gonna wrap it. You can squeeze the loop down shut if you want. What I want you to do is leave, we have a, a little twist in there, but I want you to leave as much of this open as possible. And we wanna make like a nice round head. <laughs> so go around three, four, five times, and then I do want you to go under. You're gonna have to go through that V at least once or twice 
to round out the head. Otherwise, it's just going to look too flat. See? Yeah. You, you know, if it doesn't work for you at first, just undo it. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. Just undo it. And I am going to, pull, I'm just going to probably use all of this. I'm going to pull this off. And it's loosey-goosey. It doesn't even matter. You can just wrap it around, and then we're going to needle felt it all in place. So just make the head round if you want. Like I said, mine is fashioned after more of like a little peg doll. So just make the face nice and round. You can use your coarser needles here because we're on the underneath of the wool. So like right now I'm using a 38 star. Diane says, I seem to have trouble when needle felting around the chenille stem. It turns out lumpy rather than smooth. Do you have any suggestions? It turns out lumpy rather than smooth. All right, so Joelle says when she needle felts over a chenille stem, it turns out lumpy rather than smooth. Um, are you adding more wool so that, is the lumpy part the wire? And if so, just smooth it out with your wool. I mean, you can layer this wool on wherever you want. So all we're gonna do here with the head is make it nice and round and attach it to the body. Now someone asked, am I gonna put more wool on the body? And the answer is yes, but I wanna get my head on first. Gotta get my head on straight. <laughs> And what colors of wool are we using? We are using Living Felt uh, MC1 Cotton White and Vintage Red. And then we're going to use some black and some dark brown and uh, pale peach for the face. Okay. <laughs> Anne says, she, I skated for years and she can't wait to make one of these. I see a question mark a series of question marks from Debbie, but do we know what those are? Yep, they were asking about the colors of wool. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, all right, so needle felt your head until it's nice and smooth. Mine is not done, it's not smooth, but I do wanna jump ahead since we have so many parts to make and show you what to do. So just remember, I, I will make sure I've said it four or five times, um, take your time, needle felt these things nice and firmly, and needle felt them smooth, because you want this to really last for years. So then we're gonna take a little bit of uh, pale peach. We have about nine colors in our MC1 that we recommend for skin tones. And this happens to be a very popular one for fair skin kind of Caucasian uh, creations. Um, and also good for the inside of mouse's ears. <laughs> now you don't even have to cover the whole face the whole head it depends on what you're doing like I like my doll I think she looks cozier my doll my ornament I think she looks cozier if the back of her head is covered in her hat so I don't even uh, need the skin tone on the back of her head so all you want to do is pull off a little tuft of that fiber and needle felt it onto the face just like that and i am using my 42 triangle to tack all of that into place shallow tack shallow tack shallow tacks okay what proportion should the head be in relation to the body my head my body and head they're about i think it's three and a half heads high three and a half four heads high I did I did look at that and I think like you see that maybe with like little dwarves and sometimes little cartoony characters that you're gonna have fewer heads high so she's just a little girl and she's just a little playful thing I didn't want some big leggy ornament <laughs> you know <laughs> I want something huge okay so this is really rough and ready y'all since we have so many parts I don't want to spend too much time refining because I'm gonna jump ahead to a doll that is where you want it to be before you start clothing and such okay so final questions before I attach my head was the head made from one of the four inch chenille pieces yeah it was made from one of the leftovers yeah, it was. And I do think uh, that a time or two, I may have cut mine to seven instead of the eight. So you might check that out. Now, I do find that getting the head um, in completely smooth and ready is a little bit easier when it's off the doll. So you might play with that idea. Um, you know, don't don't put it on until it's all nice and smooth and just how you want it. It keeps you from flip-flopping your body with the boots and the hands all over your foam any more than you need to, okay? So what you're gonna have right now is boots done, mittens done, and um, now we're gonna put the head on. So I just like to put the head on just like this, put one wire in front and one wire in back. And this is why you don't want too much wool on the torso, because you're gonna twist this just around the torso and just anchor it on. 
and then we're going to bury all of that with wool. So one I go this way and one I'm going to go this way so they're not twisting the same way. This will help her just have a little bit of a neck and mine is not finished. It's really rough and ready, but this is what you're going to do. So you get your head on and get that all smooth, get the head on, and then you're gonna have your body finished and it's going to look like this. Insto presto, ready right here. Voila. Voila, yeah, voila, voila. This is where you wanna to get to. So let me show it to you a little close. Notice the back of my head doesn't have any color on it because I don't really care all that much and the body is needle felted and the mittens are needle felted and they have that little bit, how can you see, a little bit of a shelf. It just gives, it looks like the mittens are on there if it has a little bit of a shelf. And Carrie says, oh, I just tuned in, but I'm already mesmerized. <laughs> oh, fun, okay. So now it is up to you what you wanna make next. We need to make a hat and a scarf. So some of these methods are going to look um, very familiar to you. Um, and so to get a little hat going, you can use one of your leftover pieces, and I would say use one of the longer pieces for the hat so that you can make your hat as long and as spindly as you want. And again, I'm just gonna get you started on this. Um, let me see if I can jump out a little bit. I'm just gonna get you started on this and um, show you how we got there. Diana says, doing the head before attaching, very good tip. Oh, cool, yeah, I, it helps me anyway. Okay, so what I like to do, again, is just take a long, narrow strip you're gonna have more control if you work in narrow strips, at least with the batting. And because you can layer it over and over again, it doesn't matter you know, that you piece it onto itself. And now you can decide how long you want your hat to be. Your chenille stem should be, you, your chenille stem should just be a, about the length you want your hat to be. So if you want your doll to have a hat that's about this long, then double it over to that degree. The reason you wanna use a longer piece is so that you have uh, something to twist it with. So let's say we wanna make a long hat, and I'm gonna show you a stubby hat too, I started. Then you're just gonna twist your chenille stem about to that place. You can open the loop if that's easier for you or you don't have to. Again, draft your wool out so it's nice and narrow. And this sort of twisting motion, you guys are gonna just have, you know, you know, oh yeah, these are just like basic building blocks, right? The same, the same sort of methods work over and over again. You can tw pinch that shut, and then we're gonna twist the fiber. I do like a little bit uh, to, to stick off the end because I don't want the white to show. So if you stick a little off the end, fold it over, and then you can wrap over it, and then you have that covered. I'll just go in just a little bit here. And now we're gonna twist down just to where the wire was doubled. And this is why that using that extra wire is really handy because you can have something to grab onto. And we're just gonna twist this and remember to hold it tension. Remember to hold tension so you don't lose what you're working on. And then I'm just gonna go right back up it, which is kind of the magic of working with batting over roving because it just kind of, as long as you're holding that tension pretty good, you can just go back up and down in the wrapping. And just keep wrapping where you want that hat to be more full. I will kind of stop right here, let's say, see the basic shape of my hat, and then just pull off the balance. Anne asks, before you start wrapping the wool around the chenem, do you split the thickness as well? Uh, it, I do. I'm not working with a full thickness of the batting, and so in the kit, you're going to be getting a split thickness. Mm -hmm. Yes, good question, Anne. I do split the thickness of the bats. For those of you who get our MC1 batting for the first time, you'll know it is, it is a really thick bat. So now we're just going to shape our hat. All you have to do is shape your hat and get it how you want it, and remember not to needle felt this very end down here. So get your head, this is the why I like to use the wire is because one, it makes it pretty fast to make a hat, but two, you can make it any shape you want. You can even make it super long so that your hat ends up curling on to you know, something else. Um, so I'm using my 42 triangle. It's very slow, but what it allows me to do is needle felt the shape gradually um, without making a whole bunch of holes. So keep needle felting your hat, making it just how you want. And then I'm gonna grab the one that I started. I started making a different hat. I thought it looked even a little more pixie than the ones Ooh, I've yeah. been doing, a little more stubby. <laughs> so 
Notice that this hat is pretty well felted and then this end is all loose and fluffy. <clears throat> I'm gonna cough. <laughs> I don't have a, a mic silencer right now. What I'm gonna do though is push on the wool. <clears throat> I'm gonna push on the wool and cut it off inside the hat, way up in there, so I can set the hat on her head. <coughs> I'm so sorry, I cannot silence myself. I'm gonna just shove this down under there and clip that off. And notice we have a whole bunch of wool now that we can fluff out and put on the head of our doll. Just like that. And now just decide which way you want her hat to go. I kind of like mine going backwards rather than forwards. Um, this looks a little more like Devo this way. <laughs> <laughs> and so now you can use whatever needle you feel comfortable with. I'm going to start with my 42 and notice I'm holding pressure. And oh, by the way, let me tell you, I mean, this is me pinching. I mean, I am pinching on this hat and I'm not able to flatten it. So needle felt your stuff pretty firm. We do have a firmness tutorial online. So I'm going to smash it down on her head and I'm going to start tacking it down. Um, you can use a more aggressive needle. You can use a 42 triangle also. You can always cover up any really big needle marks, but what we want is this to really anchor onto her head. Uh, Diana says she did a sympathy cough. Thank you, Diana. <clears throat> I really needed that. I feel much better now. Okay, so I'm going to mash this down on her head. And really, feel free to add skin tone all the way around if you want on your doll. This is just what I found that I kind of like. Feeling like her hat's way pulled down and keeping her warm. Now, I like to attach it to her head, and then what I like to do is go back and create a little shelf, and we just do the same, kind of the same thing we did on the gloves. And I've also found that I like this kind of arched on her face. I've done a few of these now, and I like it to be kind of arched. You could always go back and add more wool to the rim, and I'll show that to you now. Just take another strip. Take another strip. You can actually fold it in half and use that fold that you've created and then guide that wool. I think, I think this would also be a really cute little Waldorf like faceless. Ooh, you know, yeah. it would make a good little faceless doll. So you can add a little more wool right on top and just give her that cozy hood that I was talking about and let it have full coverage of her head. What needle are you using? This one is the 42 triangle. On the hat, I'm pretty much gonna use the 42 triangle because I don't want to leave big needle marks. So I'm willing to be a little more patient with that. Now I'm gonna fold this around the head again, just so I really, in this case, I just want her to look all bundled up. I thought I was gonna make a boy too, and I never got that far. It was just enough to keep. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those who like to needle felt loose, uh, just remember my pieces are gonna look looser than I will finish them. I really want them to be finished, but we're gonna have to jump ahead here so that we can finish our doll, our ornament, in the time. So forgive my speed felting. Uh, we're gonna take a little tiny bit of, I just have a mishmash here in my pile, a little bit of black for the eyes, and we're gonna make her some hair. And you can use, gosh, any old pinch of fiber for the hair will work. I've decided on this girl, I'm gonna make her eyes a little more far apart. So I'm just gonna put a tuft of wool right there and I'm gonna just poke it in and twirl and poke. That's how we make a dot, just like that. I know I have another piece of black. Take a tiny pinch. You don't even have to fuss with it. If it's too big, pull it out. If, or needle felt it in more. If it's too little, <laughs> add some more. I, I'm not very close to my piece, but I'm gonna give her a little bit of a wide eye look. Could you add the hair before the hat, or is you it can, best to add the hat? Before? You can, but I add so little hair that I want to see where the where the hat line's going to go. That's all I that's all I decided to do. So the truth is, there are no rules except keep your eye on the needle. It's a good one, good guideline. It's just a guideline. <laughs> <laughs> just a guideline. 
Is there a way to give her some curves? Sure, Linda, just keep adding some, uh, just keep adding some wool. I'm putting a skirt on her so you can make her as curvy as you want. I'm taking a tiny pinch of red. I'm just gonna curl it between my fingers. I'm gonna give her a little smile. I mean, y'all make your, make your little skater whatever you want to look like. I tend to find that I'll make one thing over and over in the same way so that I can show it to you. You know, I don't give myself a lot of room for variety. Uh, because I'm doing the lesson, but I hope you guys will just take this wherever you want. Let's do some quickie hair because we've got to get her dressed. What do you got, Anne? <laughs> Diana says, OMG, you got both eyes the same in one hit. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this is all I do with hair is just like the mouth. So this is what I do. You can just twist this MC1 out. You do want to use some pretty good pressure in your fingers. You can add some moisture, like you could have a little damp sponge or a little bucket of water. But mostly, I just want to really dry felt it together with my fingers and then decide how long you want her hair to be. Like this, this hat is not finished, so y'all remember that. Her hat's not finished, not finished, not finished. What I'm gonna do is just tuck her hair right into there and add a few locks just like that so that they're trailing around her face. And this is just my way, but I like her hair because I want her hair, it'll kind of fly out. If you see with the MC1, and I'm not going to over needle felt it. But hey, look, you could use yarn too. Yarn would be a really good choice for hair on this little doll, and it would probably hold up. You just want it to be a thin yarn is all. So here's my doll. I'm going to be all wanting to finish her tonight because she's so undone. Thank goodness for the great British Bake Off. <laughs> I thought I could probably, people always ask how long it takes to make something. I thought, well, I could answer it in how many episodes I have to watch, right. to, watch to finish it. <laughs> hey, let's make her scarf super quick. I'm going to have to jump uh, forward to that so we can get all of her little clothes on. The scarf is super duper easy. All we're going to do is take, take a strip, and it doesn't even matter if your strips are kind of rough, but make it just maybe a, a little bit wider than you want for the scarf, and you can always tease it out. Um, <clears throat> Let me go here a little bit. So make it a little bit wider than you need. What you're gonna do, this is how I do it. I'm just gonna needle felt all up and down the middle about a finger wide, all up and down the middle. Do that for a while. Yeah, I'm poking it into the foam, but I'm using a very fine needle. Peel it off, continue on the other side. We're just compacting all those fibers down and making sort of a center channel. You can do that two, three, four times, whatever you feel comfortable with. And then we're gonna take the sides and just fold them in. <clears throat> I use my finger for this. You could use a ruler. You could use a piece of cardboard. We just wanna get a nice fold along this edge. You're gonna do that. I'm leaving the ends loose on both sides for the moment. You're gonna do that on this side too. And I'm not driving it into the foam. I'm just using the foam to kind of hold it in place. And this is a little fiddly, meaning it takes a little time to get it as even as you want. I make my, this is probably a little long. My scarf is probably more about that long. Fold both ends in, get it all nice and even, peel it up off your foam. And I do this back and forthness a few times. I even bring in, <clears throat> this is my, World Market save forty percent <laughs> off coupon. Super fancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once I do that a few times, then I get nice and flat, and then I'm going to get that edge real nice and clean by using the card and just needle felting in the sides. I'm going to fold in the ends uh, so that I have a nice shelf there. Fold in the ends and get those how you want them, and then I'm going to add some racing stripes. So here's my little scarf going. Just one quick tip on the stripes of your scarf. Uh, after making a few and not wanting the white to be, I want the white to be as pure as possible, at least on one side. You see how rough it is on this side? What I found is if you start it on the back, <clears throat> make your stripe long, just like we did. I know we're almost out of time. I'm gonna be so fast. I gotta still gotta get skates and a nap and a cinch sack. We might go over a minute. Okay, here's the striping. Start the striping on the back, uh, on the other side, and just tack it into place. And then what you can do is fold it over onto the top, right where that same little white puffiness is, and at least one side will be super pure and clean. 
and tack that down. And I tack over both sides so that it's clean and not fuzzy on the edges, but stop short of that end. Use your scissors if you have to, to cut it off short, and that'll give you some nice clean stripes. Rose says, great idea. Thanks. Lori says, I'm loving all these things. <laughs> Good. Well, I, I would really love, if y'all are watching the, the YouTube playback, if anyone's watching, I hope that you'll leave a comment down below. Uh, y'all will be able to watch this on, the, on our YouTube channel after we're all done. Um, so I hope that you leave a comment. Let us know what was the most helpful part of this tutorial. Um, for my scarf, what I'm going to do is totally cinch it around her neck, like really tight, and then I'm going to needle felt it into place. So give it the, you know, whatever twist you want. Uh, just wrap it around her neck, choose one of your needles, and needle felt it on there. Really needle felt it onto her neck and get it to stay in place. And it's going to stick out because the way the wool, look, she's already racing. So <clears throat> needle felt it down and get it to stay in place and cover anything you don't want. Uh, let's make her a skirt and a cinch sack because it's almost the same process. And, um, oh, right, I'll jump to a finished cinch sack, but I'll tell you all how to do it. Uh, and can you do me a huge favor and thread that with a double threaded needle? Sorry, I didn't do it already. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make her little skirt, uh, her little skirt here, and her little cinch sack. And this is gonna be like the easiest outfit you've ever made. So you're gonna wanna grab your three inch thingy, whatever that is, and a pencil, ideally. And on the underneath side of each one, trace a little circle. This is a three inch circle, at least for the skirt, I found a three inch circle was, at least for this size doll, was about right. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the cinch sack fabric. And you can center this, what's so fun, this little print, you can center whatever you want to kind of stick out. I'm gonna have all of those show. Okay, so what you're gonna do on the skirt is cut right on the line and I use my pinking shears so it doesn't fray. If you don't have uh, pinking shears, you can also use fray stop and I'm sure that some of the sewists <laughs> in our midst will like make them very fancy clothing. Um, but all we're gonna do is cut this out with our little pinking shears and then it's gonna fray less and it's gonna look oh so cute. And Okay, that's pretty easy. Then what I wanna do is just fold the fabric in half, fold it in half again, and now we have this little pie shape. And I'm gonna make a tiny, oh so tiny cut in the fabric. Look how tiny that is. Just enough that I can fit it up on her to her body. So when you open it up, <clears throat> It'll be about a finger hole. Shove her two little feetsies through that hole. Um, what you're gonna do is just pull that little skirt up and down it goes. Now, on my skirts, what I like to do is make sure that I have it in the right place. And then what you can do is do little finger creases and you can do your finger creases even before you put it on her and you might even decide to iron yours or starch them or whatever. Um, but you can do these little finger creases all around her skirt so that it's kind of pleated. If you have a softer fabric, like the very first one I made was from an old flannel shirt, uh, then it might drape a little more nicely. But the quilting fabric is still really cute and um, you know you can just have fun with the patterns and then what I do is I'm just gonna needle felt I'm not gonna have time for that but just needle felt a little band of fiber right around her skirt to kind of anchor it to her body okay so there's that oh I'm glad if you guys are liking this um, all right so here we go now we're gonna make the cinch sack and the tip I have for the cinch sack is to um, cut outside the line. You want a little more perimeter outside for the cinch sack, just so you have a little room. So I don't know, a quarter inch or something like that. It doesn't really matter because you can even cut it again after. So we've been debating what she has in her sack. It could be presents. Mm -hmm. It could be 
Gummy bears. Gummy bears. <laughs> it could be a pie, and maybe there's oh, a pie in there. I should have gone classier with a pie. <laughs> well, I was thinking she could be like have a change of clothes for a night out, and in, in the. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. She's not running away from home. That's for sure. It's yes. not. It's not her running away from home bag. It's. She's bringing her felting supplies to a friend's house. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, so what you're going to need for this is a little needle felted ball. So just make yourself a little tiny needle felted ball, and we're going to be wrapping that in a cinch sack. Magic Ann has made me my needle and thread, so I'm just going to show you how to do this, and you're going to have to do it on your own. You want to start from the outside of the fabric. So enter your needle on the outside and come up here. You're going to want to leave yourself a tray. Trail. I know we're over already. Ah, but we've got to do the skates. Leave yourself a trail of, you know, three, four inches. She gave me a super long thread, I which did. is perfect. It's perfect. And I also have a super long needle. All you're going to do is run your needle all the way around. We're not going to have time to finish it, but run it all the way around the circle like this. What, I, what I'm going to do is pass it to Anne here in a second while I'll do the skates. And uh, that is going to allow us to cinch it up around our ball. And I'll show it to you because honestly, tying it is a little bit fiddly. But this is what you're going to do so that in the middle, we'll pull on the two thread ends and it'll seal our little ball inside. So I'm going to make the skates while Anne does this. Don't, don't have to be perfect. Um, so let's look at our skates and woo bling in this kit. <laughs> yeah, Edwina says, oh, honey, don't worry about running over. We're, we're happy to be here. Are you guys? Yeah. I know, you know, YouTube doesn't really like long things. Like if, if it's 20 minutes, people will watch it. But on Facebook, we're like, oh, yeah, let's just hang out. I could felt with you guys all day, too. That'd be just fine. <laughs> Someone else can do the accounting. <laughs> here's, here's how we size the skates. Now, this is just how I do the skates. So y'all might find even a, you know, a more brilliant way to do it. So let me just show you real close. All I did was put this real blingy chenille stem on the bottom and they're just glued in place. It might look a little messy. She's been in and out of my box. And this stuff is metallic. It grabs onto everything. But what I do is I'm going to start by measuring here on the foot with this uh, back. I'm going to fold it in half, uh, fold it in on itself. And I don't know why, but I like it to come up the back of her boot just a little bit, just about like that. This seems a little long. And if it's too long, you can always cut it after. So may, may as well cut both at the same time. Mine is turning out to be about, uh, I have two and a half inches, I think. Her foot is about an inch, so that makes a lot of sense. So then I'll just cut this one the same length. Oh, Wendy, thank you for that. You all are so kind. I, I can't tell you like how fun this is for us to come together with you every week. It really is so fun for us as well. Thank you, Lori. Y'all are so sweet. Everybody just big old kisses from all of us. <laughs> we love it. Well, all we wish is, you know, y'all have fun with this for sure. Okay, here's what I got. I'm just going to put my little metal chenille stem on there, and I like to bend it up around the boot. I don't know why I like to come up the back. You might like it to come up the front, but what you'll find is it's going to be kind of ready to grab onto your wool. And then I'm going to put the glue right on the boot. So take this off, make them both if you want, just so you're ready. Again, we're going to start here at the end of the foot, bend it back over on itself and give it a little, this one might be a little long. One foot's longer than the other. I have the same problem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're just using Aileen's tacky glue. You know, we do have this in the shop now, and somehow I just can't seem to get it on the website. I guess I just want to keep all the glue for myself. I don't know what's the, my problem. Okay. So here we go. I'm just going to put the glue right, right on her foot. And yeah, it's going to be more glue, and I don't have any totally invisible glue. Maybe you do, but I don't have any totally invisible glue. And I'm just going to shove that on there. That's it. Just mash it on there, and it'll stick. And then we're going to do boot, too. Uh, Don says, I'm definitely making one tomorrow. <laughs> Teresa says, yes, it is really so fun to come together and do this. So sweet. And I saw that Sugar Queen says, do we have a quit kit? And the answer is yes, we do have a kit, and it's on our site under Needle Felting Kits. Whoops. You're going to need, remember that you're going to need some, you know, embroidery floss or ribbon to hang her with. 
and you're going to want some sewing thread. This one I haven't mashed all the way. There we go. There's something about if you bend that stuff, it just sticks better. So there's the, her two little skates are on. I haven't secured this down or finished her hat, but Anne has her cinch sack uh, ready for me, just so you can see how it works. And again, it, it is a little fiddly to, to secure. Thank you, Anne. Um, if, you're, if your thread is really short, you might want to keep your needle on just so you can tell the difference. Am I, I'm a little tangled up. Who's who? Oh, here's one. Okay, here's one and here's one. Okay, find your two, two ends of your thread and notice that all you have to do is pull on them and they're gonna, you know, they're gonna close up for you. As I learned that making sock dolls. Like then you close the back of a head of a sock doll, which was my therapy one really difficult year before I was working full time <laughs> for a living felt. <laughs> also, all you have to do is pull both ends of that thread and you're gonna have a darling little cinch sack just like that. And um, I'm gonna cut these threads off here. And it's got the magic scissors. And I do find a couple of things is that one, um, you want to pull it really tight. And you can tie this in a knot. But if you tie it tight and secure a knot, secure a knot, and then go back around the sack a couple of times. Like after you tie the knot, tie a couple of knots and then go back around it like that. And uh, one one way, one the other way, and tie another knot so that it stays just like that. And my recommendation is to get some sewing thread um, and sew through her little mitten in the same color. Because over time, this is the kind of thing that gets lost. And what happens is you end up telling the story about how she used to have a cinch sack. <laughs> Isn't that right? You got it. So true. <laughs> you got to tell the story how she used to have a cinch sack. So here's a, this is just another version of this girl unfinished uh, <laughs> that we made today. And her cinch sack is held on. Uh, her skirt is, I don't even think I fully attached her skirt, but you can see it has the you know the little pleats in it and all she's missing is some embroidery floss to hang her and we're gonna give you uh, a little silver jingle bell um, that you can put it matches her skates we decided silver more than the vintage mm. one to, to match her skates so I really hope you guys enjoyed this process and if you make one we hope you'll share it in our group living felt friends and um, yeah, I can't wait to see the ones that you come up with. You guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We hope it was fun. If you enjoyed this project, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you get notified every time we go live. And be sure to check out the resources so you can grab the supply pack for this little girl. And also you can grab the supply pack for our little 2D winter scene that we shared earlier. And we hope to see you in our group, Living Felt Friends. See you next time.